Uh, welcome to GDC 2017. If you're around the bike on booth, we're going to be giving a demonstration of our uh, latest VFX software platform. So uh, please gather around. Uh, we're also streaming this live to Facebook, so hello everyone online. Uh, my name's Derek, and I'm the head of the product team at Bikon. We're really excited this year to be at GDC because we're unveiling a brand new software platform, Bikon Show. Uh, if you're at SIGGRAPH, you might have got a, a sneak preview. We called it Project Katana at that point, and we showed a couple of uh, feature demos, a couple of tech demos. Uh, but the software is much more uh, mature at this point, and we're launching it as Bikon Shogun. So Bikon Shogun is, uh, is a huge investment for us at Bikon. We've spent uh, more than the last three years working on this, and we've had a team of more than 10 people working on it. So that means that it's uh, more than 30 man years worth of investment for us, so it's a, it's a pretty big deal for us. Three years ago, we went out to people in the industry, people in games and VR, uh, movies, films, television, and we asked them, what do you need from mocap? What do you need from us? And we got a lot of really great feedback from, from different people in the industry, but most of the feedback fell into three important things. It said, today's VFX is, is done in live. It's pre-viz, it's pre-production. So we want more of what happens in mocap. We want more of that happening in live. The uh, second thing people told us was, good software is powerful, great software is effortless. So we want something that's powerful, but it's also really easy to use. Uh, and that means things happening in live, things happen automatically, things happen in, uh, with a lot of intelligence. But the most important thing we got from the industry for what we need to do in mocap was time is money. VFX uh, is a business, whether you're in a studio, whether you're making VR content, whether you're making games, the mocap portion is just one portion of the work we have to do, and what we really need is to be able to get from one end of motion capture to the other as quickly as possible with as high quality data in the first pass as possible. So that was the feedback we got back, and what we did is we set ourselves a goal, a goal statement for, for Shogun, and we said what Shogun needs to be is final quality skeletal data by the day's end. So that statement really says, we're focusing on skeletal data, because that's what people in the industry want. Uh, we need first class, first pass quality to be as high as possible, as little post work as, as, as we need to do. But most importantly, the statement, by day's end. We want it to be things for things to be as efficient and quickly as, as, as they possibly could be, so you get through your workflow uh, by the end of the day. So we've got a whole new set of features within Katana, uh, and I'm going to tell you about a few of them that we're going to be demonstrating. We're going to show you the new live subject calibration, where we do all the subject calibration in live. We're going to be looking at camera monitoring and camera recovery in live. We want to show you that we can write all the real-time data directly to disk. We're going to show you a video mesh overlay that shows you how well everything's solving, how well everything's doing. And also, we're going to show you direct integration with game engines. So we're going to be streaming the data directly into Unreal today. Uh, we have two performers helping us out. This is Gabby and Tiffany helping us out. And uh, you can see that they've got katana swords with them as well. And they're going to do some uh, martial arts demonstrations for us. Probably the single biggest thing we want to point out about the new feature set is something we're calling Unbreakable Solve. So the feature that we've spent the most time investing in that has the biggest impact on the quality of the data, both in live and in post, is massive improvement in our labeling and solving. So, the uh, performance here are going to go through some really cool moves, we're going to do some martial arts stuff, we're going to do some interaction, uh, close up, things like hugging, and hopefully what we're going to show you is that the quality of data you get in live and in first pass is a step change in what you would have gotten in the past. Uh, the last thing before I hand this over that I'm going to say is the other thing that was really important for us in Shogun was that it was very uh, community driven. So right from the start, we, we started doing some early betas, we worked with a lot of our current customers, even some people that are mocap that, that weren't our customers, uh, getting feedback on all the features right from the start, because we recognize that mocap is just part of a, a bigger pipeline, whether it's a studio or a games company, and we want to make sure that everything we were doing was done in the best way possible for the people that work in the industry. So we got really good feedback from a bunch of partners. Uh, but we also decided that if you want to know what's going on in the industry, you've got to bring someone in from the industry. 
So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to introduce uh, our new family member, our new uh, VFX product manager. This is Tim Doubleday. Uh, hey, how's it going? Uh, Tim comes from his most recently from Imaginarium Studios in London, where he did a lot of work on Battlefield 1. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Tim, and Tim is going to take you some through the... Okay. <laughs> Tim's going to take you through some of the features we were talking about. Hi, uh, can you hear me? That's great. So, thanks a lot, Joe, for the introduction. Um, my name's Tim Doubleday. I've been working at the Imaginarium Studios in London for the last three years, working on uh, Battlefield 1 and Star Citizen and the Star Wars franchise. So, we've kind of um, got some experience working with body data and working with the Vicon system. So, I'm really lucky to be able to come in and, and kind of get my input into Shogun. So, one of the big things in any production environment is trying to maximise your time on set. You've got actors and you've got big directors, and they don't, they don't want to be waiting around for the mocap system. So, one of the new features within Shogun is an automatic subject calibration, which we're going to demonstrate now. So, if you can have one of the... What was Gabby going to step in? So normally on set, it'll take up to maybe half an hour to go through a range of motion. You then have to reconstruct the data and um, kind of make sure it was clean and then calibrate your subject ready for real time. But using Python Shogun, it's literally a matter of minutes and your subject's calibrated. So if we get into a T-pose. Okay, Paul. Okay, so we can see here the system's recognised that Gabby's in a T-pose, but it's automatically labelled the subject. Uh, and we're actually capturing fingers today as well, so that's one of the, the new advancements within this release of Shogun. Okay, can you now go through and form range motion? So, rotate your head, you can remember how to do it. Rotate your elbows. That's great, your wrists, your hips. Uh, up on the screen here you can see we've actually got one of the Vicon view cameras in the system. This is showing us uh, an overlay of the character image. So one of the advantages of this uh, kind of workflow is you can actually see the solving skeleton underneath. So as an animator you want to make sure that your, your animation is anatomically correct. And Vicon kind of has this history of work in the life science industry. And we're making use of that now within the entertainment world. So, that's great. And some finger, finger motions? Fantastic. So yeah, we can see on the, on the overlay where the, where the character's skin is and where the skeleton is underneath. Okay, that's great. And then back to T-Pose. Fantastic. Okay. And then pull click stop. That's our subject calibrator. So, in the background, Shogun was calibrating the subject while she was performing the motions. She's now ready to, to be driven in real time um, within the game engine and within the kind of Vicon ecosystem. Okay, so kind of the production background means that we work with multiple actors. They're generally now a big game or film will have maybe 10, 12, ending up 15 actors. So the, the kind of time saving within calibrating the subjects is huge. So if we can now get uh, the subject back in, like performer. So, when you're on set, the last thing you want to have to do is to kind of clear the volume. If the camera gets knocked, um, you know, get all your actors out, the director has to go and have a cup of tea, um, and the whole shoot has to basically stop. So, I'm just going to demonstrate here if we can knock a camera. Um, Paul, if you go to the camera view, Yeah, so we're going to knock a camera, and we'll see that it stops once we're in. We're getting that. So Jared here has just moved the camera, and part of the Shogun kind of feedback is showing you that the camera is now out of calibration. So we can see that the the camera is not contributing anymore. It's in a completely different position. So traditionally, like I say, you'd have to do a brand new calibration, wave the wand, it could take you know, 15, 20 minutes to get the system back up and running. But 
using one of our performers now, we can simply select that camera we want to fix. And if you just want to walk in front of it, here you can see the system is using the performer Gabby to actually recalibrate itself within the space. Yeah, that's great. That should be enough. Okay, and now if we click stop, we'll see that that camera position has jumped and it's been updated. So that camera is now happy and it's back within the system. Okay, so again, traditionally when you're capturing data in an optical mocap world, there's a whole process of reconstructing it, you have to label it and then go and clean the data, and that could take you know, anything up to half a day, a day or a week, depending on the complexity of the moves. Um, but now using Micro Shogun, we can capture the, the motion directly to disk, either within the game engine or from within Shogun. So we're just going to perform a simple um, sword fight here, and we'll show that being loaded in. Okay, pause. Can you Okay. Yeah, it's something simple, guys, but let's, let's go for it. All right, that's not that simple. That's pretty cool. <laughs> awesome. And if you want to get close together, you know, really kind of push the system. So traditionally, when two actors get close together, this kind of move becomes incredibly complex. You've got swords, you've got fingers, and you've got, you know, two, two axes close together. Did we get that? Okay, you relax guys? That's brilliant. Okay, so we're now going to have a look at that data within our post software. So all we have to do is drag in the real-time file, or mocap file, into the scene. Here we can see how kind of how fast it is to load it in. So it's, it's basically recorded the real time. It's recorded the 3D. But it's also still got the 2D data in the background. Take a look at this. It's pretty cool. Okay, just want to hit play, please. So again, traditionally that's something that would take, you know, maybe three or four hours to get from live into post. It's taken just a matter of minutes. And again, all the 2D data is in the system. So if you want to kind of go back and look at it or clean it up, it's still all there for you to use in the traditional workplace. Okay, I think that's about it uh, from us. I think we've... Uh... Why don't we see this unreal? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Good point, thank you. Uh, I'm going to now switch over to Unreal so we can, uh, we can see the action working in the game engine. So we actually stream directly into Unreal using our own plugin. And uh, here we go. So this is a, a scene that's been made for us. We can see the two characters. We've kind of themed it around a futuristic Shogun setting. So do you want to grab your swords? Awesome, and uh, yeah, so if you want to, this is Unreal, we also stream into Unity, um, we stream into Motion Builder as well, if you want to retarget, we can retarget Motion Builder, or we can use um, you know, another Iconema for example, retarget using that platform, but this is streamed directly in, and you can actually record this within, sorry, you can record this within sequences, so if you want to get it straight into your game, it's literally just click record. One thing I should uh, mention is we're running a, a mixture of cameras here, obviously not a, not a huge volume. The 
the guys are doing an incredible job working within this space. Brilliant. Well done. Yeah, round of applause for our performance today, thank you. So, one thing I love to do to kind of show off the magic behind the, um, the robustness of the solving is to get our actors to give a, a hug. And then they can rotate around. So this is something that's traditionally, you know, it's, it's impossible within an optical mocap system. But using Vicom Shogun, we've got this kind of occlusion fixing labeling underneath. And it means that something that would traditionally, you know, that just wouldn't work. It's now possible within a, within a relatively small camera system. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, brilliant. All right, so thanks a lot for tuning in. We're really excited to share Bike and Shogun with you uh, at GDC and its upcoming launch in the next couple of months. So stay tuned for more updates. Thanks a lot. It's hard not to, to miss this, you know? <laughs>